What's up, T-Botters? This is Ty from tbodfitness.com. And if the weird guy at the beginning of the video didn't uh, tell you what we're doing today, we are hitting an upper body workout. Nothing uh, crazy. We're just going to do uh, five different exercises, all pretty major moves for the upper body. There's going to be a lot of activation for today, some bigger moves. It should kind of translate to a few more calories burned than if you were doing all isolation exercises. Uh, the work ratio is going to be 50 seconds of work and 20 seconds of rest. So uh, pretty standard uh, circuit style. We are going to do every exercise in a row now. So it's going to be a little bit different than just a regular circuit. Um, if I just said that, oops. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're going to do five of the same exercise and then we're going to move on to the next exercise. A little bit different style, a little bit more bodybuilding style. Uh, for today just to kind of shake things up a bit and it also makes it easier to uh, film on camera Hopefully I don't miss anything today. That's going to be the goal um, We're going to do uh, the workout itself in total. It should be just under uh, 30 minutes So uh, that'll be fun uh, Exercises as always are going to be listed up here on screen. We're going to start with bent over dumbbell rows So we're going to use the dumbbells. We're going to hit the back we're going to be pulling those sh uh, elbows above the back. Uh, I'll kind of explain it as we're going along with it. Then we have dumbbell pullovers. Uh, these ones you can do if you have a bench at home. I can, I'm going to show you in the second round how to get a better stretch on the back. But if you don't have a bench, that's not a big deal. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to do them straight from the floor. It's a little less of a stretch and contraction of the muscles, but this is going to help kind of work that uh, those that straight arm scapular strength that you that a lot of people don't even know that they need to have but they do need to have um, from there we're going to the floor press so we're switching from a back pu pulling motion to a chest floor press it's going to be a, a kind of like a dumbbell press uh, you can do these off of a bench as well and I can show you that in the second round as well we'll just kind of add the bench in um, on that second round just to show you a few variations, but floor presses are just fine too and they're a lot safer. Um, then we're going to go to the floor fly. Now I wouldn't recommend doing these from the bench at all. I'm not even going to show you how to do them just because there's more of a chance that you're going to um, overstretch that shoulder joint more than I would like you to. I'm not a big fan of bench uh, flies, so we're just going to do floor flies and that'll keep you nice and safe the entire time. And then we're going to finish it up with a little bit of core. It's a very light move, but it's a stability move. And if it's done right, you should really feel it. It's called a dead bug. So that's going to be the upper body workout for today. So without any further ado, let's get into the workout. All right, so today we are hitting that upper body, starting with bent over rows today. So bent over rows, you're going to take an underhand grip on dumbbells. You want to bend to 90 degrees, try to keep that back straight, and then you're just trying to get those elbows above the back, More. just like this, okay? I'm going to scoot a little closer so you guys can get a better view. Just like this, we're trying to squeeze the shoulder blades together, just like this. Keep it nice and tight. Give it a couple second hold and squeeze at the top of every rep. The more neutral your spine can be, the better. You want to hinge at the hips. Bring those dumbbells up. Just is like this. If you find these weights are getting too heavy for you, you can always move down. The more you can tabletop your back, the better it will be. All right. So like I said, we're sticking with this exercise. I'm going to move the camera just slightly so you can get a different angle. Keep going from there. Alright. Round two. Up. Work. Up. A little bit different when they're all in a row. It's going to make you work harder with that one muscle that you're working. You should start to feel that burn around the second and third sets. Come on. 
I'm feeling it. A little bit different style. It's crazy the difference between working in a circuit and working consecutively like this. Reds. Grab that third angle. Five seconds. Here we go. Alright. Work. Bring it up. Should be getting a little bit of bicep activation. to one dumbbell. Still get those elbows as high as you can, but it will lighten the weight if you only got a certain number of dumbbells at home. Dumbbells can be replaced by, uh, you know, bag of groceries, water in a bucket, different things like that. You don't have to use dumbbells if you don't got them. Definitely try different grips too. Neutral grips are fine. Nice and consistent. Remember, you want those elbows to get above your back. That is the main part. The more you can do that, the better. Always something. You have to put the mic back on. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Now you can hear me better. Alright, last one. If you missed anything of what I said, I can edit it in as best as I can. Just table top that back. Pulling straight up. Last set, finish these out strong. Five seconds. All right, switching to dumbbell pullovers next. Do a bit of a side view here, so you guys can see what I'm doing. Laying down on the floor. Bring the dumbbells together, and you're bringing them as close to the ground as you can, and then back to straight. It's a very slight stretch, but an effective one. Now you guys can hear me better. This is gonna work that straight arm scapular strength. Surprisingly, this movement actually helps pull-ups. Helps works as a st stabilizer, which kind of translates to more volume of pull-ups. Nice, consistent, 
So you really feel that stretch. Right. And the, uh, and the lats there. I'm gonna switch to a bench, show you that variation. Never enough time. All right. So at the bench, you sit low, and then the same thing. Get that stretch, bring it back forward. Stretch and forward. The wider your elbows can be, the better the stretch will be. If you need to switch to one dumbbell, feel free to do that. You're trying to push through your hands, not lead with your elbows. It's like you're trying to resist it from falling to the ground. That was a little worse angle. Let me see if I can adjust the camera a bit. You guys can see more what I'm doing. That should be a little better. All right, round three on these. So you wanna sink those hips low, Just post on your feet, and then right here. Stretch, doesn't have to be a far one. Just get it below you. Feel that stretch, bring it back forward. Does not have to be heavy weights on this one. It's literally just feeling that stretch, bringing it back forward. That's all it is. Just like that. All right, take a little break here. Going into that fourth round of these. I'm gonna switch to one dumbbell just to show you how to do that one in case you missed it. One dumbbell, you just hold on to either side. Just like this and bring it forward. Get that stretch, and then back forward. If you need to, if your dumbbell's different shape than mine, you can stack your hands. That works as well. Just get that stretch, bring it forward. Just like so. Breathe out as you exert. Make sure we're drinking that water on these workouts. Definitely want the water. All right, we've got one more set. Set number four, we're gonna switch back to the two. All right. Ready, here we go. Remember, try to get those elbows wide. That's what's gonna really help get that stretch. Doesn't have to be a lot of weight. Especially when you're doing them consistently like this. And feel free to pause the video and take longer breaks. I found out yesterday that the camera only records for half an hour, so that's why these are a little bit more quick. They'll get the heart rate up if you keep up with them. But for strength training, sometimes longer breaks help you to get more out of it because it lets your muscles get more strength. All right. So that is our pullovers. Now we're going into the floor presses. Move the bench again, show you the floor press version. So 
Sorry about that time. All right. So, dumbbells are at the sides. Bring them up. Hold them above you. Feet, legs flat. Bring them down. You want about a 45 degree angle with your elbows flaring out. Just bring them straight down and up. Typically, we're all probably stronger in this movement. We always work ahead of ourselves. We don't do a lot of pulling, but we do pushing. So kind of keep that in mind. You may be able to move up. Like I said, if you get more than 20, it's probably a good idea to move up regardless of what you're doing. Rest. All right. I'm gonna change the angle on this one. And then I'll show you the bench one after this. Show you the elbow flare that you need. So you don't wanna come all the way out like this. Nothing like this. You wanna bring it in, in like a 45 degree angle. And just kinda of keep consistent with it. You wanna push to like the nipple line. The, these parts of the dumbbells should be right lined up with that nipple line the whole way up. If you go too high, you're gonna stress the shoulders and you can drop them on your face. If for whatever reason you can't get these dumbbells up, bring your elbows in and then drop them straight down. Don't drop them off to the sides. That's how you can kind of mess up your shoulder. It's nice and consistent. All right. Let's try the bench version. For those of you that have a bench at home, if not, keep with that floor press version. That works just fine too. All right, so bench press version, right like here. And then you're just pressing right off there. The only difference really with the bench press is you can get a little bit farther down. With presses, it's not a big deal. It's with the next exercise, the flies, where you can run into shoulder problems if you do them off of a bench. So I do not recommend doing them from a bench. <sighs> Should definitely start to feel that fatigue in these later sets here. <sighs> it's only set three. These are 20 pound dumbbells and they're more than enough for me. Definitely feeling a burn as you should be too. And don't be upset if you can only use like tens or fives, especially near the later sets. They get a lot. I'm gonna turn this bench to the side, get a little different angle. All right, towel off here. All right, moving right along. All right, chest presses, just like this. Three, breathe out as you push. Four, five, that's it. Straight up. Nice and steady down. Lining those dumbbells up with the nipple line. Nothing crazy. <sighs> Hit that like button if you're surprised you can get this good of a workout. We're only about halfway through the workout here. If you ask me, that's pretty good. <sighs> nice and steady. That's it. All right. We got one more set. I'm actually gonna transfer to the floor press again because that'll set me up for the next exercise. All right, you guys know what to do. If I'm not in position, you guys just get in, and start doing them when you hear that buzzer. All right, nice and steady. That's what it's all about. 
Breathe out as you push. That's it. These upper body muscles. If you're weak upper body, these ones are good to do. The ones that I've shown you today are some of the most fundamental upper body movements you can possibly have. Doing them or a version of them in your workouts will definitely help you gain strength. All right. Next up is the floor flies. I would not recommend doing the same weight that you are doing for your presses because you can definitely press a lot more than what you can when you fly. But I can do it because I have been I have trained in this move a little bit. So with the floor flies, you're going to bring them wide, keep them lined up with that nipple line, and then you bring them back to center. Kind of like you're opening up to hug like a big tree. You want to keep a slight bend in the elbows, just like this. There we go. And just kind of keep it nice and consistent. Get that stretch. You don't have to go super far down. Go right to about the time that your elbow touches, maybe a few inches above the ground, and then bring it back up. Nice and steady. That's what it's all about. All right. I'm going to go ahead and change that angle for you guys so you guys can kind of get that front view. Thank goodness most of the stuff is on the floor today. I'd be tiring myself out changing this mat around. All right, round two. Here we go. Work. Nice and steady. Down, steady, up, down, and up. Just like that. Nothing crazy. You'll notice the slight bend in my elbows. You can even bring them, you can even get a better bend on those elbows. The goal is kind of just to keep them wide and go up. It's not like a, a chest press. It's more of like you're reaching around for a hug. And these should kind of hit those shoulders, but it's also hitting the pec minor, which is a hard one to kind of target sometimes. All right. Rest. That was round two? Is that two? Two or three? I can't remember. I think it was two. So we got three more. Keep it nice and steady. Lower the weights if you need to. Make sure we're keeping up with those drinks too. Water is fuel for the muscles. They will not work for you if you're not getting your water. And a workout every day is a great way to make yourself thirsty so you can get your daily cap, you know, water intake that you need. And with that, it helps in weight loss, helps brain function. We are mostly made up of water, so it's good to have a lot of that in the system, you know. Nice and consistent with these floor flies. Take a break if you need to. I've been training for years, that's why I can kind of keep doing these. If you guys are just starting out, or you're even a one year in, that might be more than enough for you. Two more ex two more sets of things. We're catching the dead bug. We've made it all the way through the workout. So keep consistent with that. You guys can do it. Ready. Round four. Here we go. Work. Nice and wide. That's it. Nice and steady, nice and wide. Two. Here we go. Nice stretch. Three. Push that chest forward. Try not to let your shoulders lead the movement. Just your chest. Five. Nice stretch at the bottom. Squeeze at the top if you can. Stretch at the bottom. Squeeze at the top. 
stretch and squeeze. That's it. You got it. You got it. All right. Yes. We got one last set, and then we're switching to the four move, the dead bugs. It's a stability move, a lot easier than the other ones we've been doing today. Like I said, these first four exercises especially are heavy hitters. They burn a lot of calories. Ready, last one of these. Down. The same things with the floor flies, especially in these later sets. If you need to bail out, you bring elbows close, you drop straight down. Do not drop out to the side. Even if, even if you get out here, make sure that you're kind of being conscious about where your muscles are. If you don't think that you can get the dumbbells back up in these later sets, do not attempt more repetitions. Cancel the set, take a longer break, get back into it on the next round. You can work up to that full 50 seconds that we're working here. It is not, there's no one judging you, no competitions. The goal is to just be safe, be consistent. You're not gonna be able to help your fitness journey if you're injured. All right. So last one here, finishing up with what I call the dead bugs. I'm gonna turn to the side here so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So this is a core stability move, like I said. What you're doing is you have dumbbell up and you want to come across and then you're switching and you're going back like this. Now this is the dumbbell version. On the next round, I will show you the weightless version. This is literally just a stability move. It's very easy to do, but after a while, you'll start to feel it. By that third, fourth set, you're gonna feel that that core's working because it has to stabilize. Keep in mind, the leg that goes straight is staying off the ground. So we're just switching back and forward. All right, I'm gonna show you the weightless version next. And I might even go and grab a physio ball. If you have one of those at home, I'll show you that version on the third round here. Many different ways to do this one. All right, so right here, bring it back just like this. And if you can get your shoulder blades off, you can actually work harder with this one. It's all about what skill level you're at. So as you try to bring those shoulder blades off the ground, this exercise gets significantly more difficult. But flat is good as well. You're gonna probably start to feel this one in your quad, your, your hip flexors, which is that top part of your leg next to your hips. That's totally fine. Just means that your core is asking for help and the hip flexors are right next door. Rinse. All right, so that is round two of those. Let me grab the uh, physio ball real quick. So if you have a physio ball, you can do this version. And the physio ball actually makes you work hard as well. It's nice and steady, nothing crazy. When you have the Visio ball, you can actually push your hand and your knee into the Visio ball and make yourself work a little bit more stably, but also work a little bit more difficult. <sighs> the main goal is trying to keep that leg that goes straight and the arm that goes straight off of the ground. Like I said, in those later rounds, you start to feel this one. All right. Looks like we have two more sets with this one. And then we're all done. 
Give a like and subscribe or comment below if this workout kicked your butt. I know it's getting me. All right, round four. Work. Nice and steady. Back and forward. Nothing crazy. Remember to breathe. Opposite hand, opposite knee. Opposite hand, opposite knee. You got it. Flex that core if your hip flexors are hurting. You can get a little bit more out of it. All right. Rest. We have one more set. Finish these ones strong. It's not a hard exercise, but it will get you. Got to shake out my hip flexor a little bit. Whew. Last one of this routine. Ready? All right. Work. And switch. If you want a little bit more difficult, try to keep your foot straight up as well. That will make this exercise harder. Don't drop the ball. Nice and steady. Keep switching sides. Got it. We're almost there, buddy. Do your best. Try not to quit. Finish the set strong. All right. All right, that's the routine. Good job if you guys stuck with me. I trust you got a good upper body workout. Thanks for hanging in there. I'm gonna throw it to past Tyler so that uh, he can get the, get you guys out on your way. Thanks for following along with me. And here's past Tyler. All right guys, so that was the upper body workout for today. Thanks for stopping by. Um, it's a great workout. I hope you got a lot out of it. A Little bit different style with that bodybuilder style, staying with the same exercises several times in a row but I think it works out for all of us. Um, uh, feel free to like and subscribe to the video. There is a donation tabs in the description box below. If you feel like you got something out of this workout, any donations uh, would be greatly appreciated. Uh, it helps keep the lights on, keeps my small business afloat, especially during these harder times. Uh, but obviously the whole workouts are free, so don't feel uh, like you have to. Thank you to those who have donated. It, that goes uh, without saying, that is greatly appreciated. Um, I hope you guys uh, come back uh, tomorrow. We're gonna have a, a different workout for tomorrow. And uh, as always, finish strong. <music>